and welcome to Click Team Fusion Tutorial. So, we've created a level editor, but it doesn't really do anything. So now, we allow it to do something. We allow it to change tiles. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin. Welcome to this episode. So, we've created our level editor, if we have a look at it. So if I run frame, uh, let's double click on the frame, run frame, and let's load it up. So we can see we've got this really nice toolbar at the top and we can select the different options. Okay, remember this is all back end only, so it doesn't matter that it's a bit small and it doesn't look very good, but it's all back end, so the end user won't see it. I can select different tiles, but I currently can't update the tiles, so this is what this episode is about. Now, Click Team Fusion doesn't know which tile I've selected and that's going to be a problem. Okay, It knows that it's located a green tick there, but it doesn't know where, which one I've selected. So that sounds like something that this data store should know. So let's go to this data store and let's do the alterable value as uh, current tile selected. Uh, if, I spell, if I can spell. Okay, and that will tell ClickTeam, right, that's the current tile that I've selected. Okay, good. Now, let's go back in here. Now, each of these tiles that it creates are identical in every way, which is going to be a problem. We need them to be unique in some way. We need the, the click team to be able to tell them apart, which at the moment it can't. So, that sounds like an idea for alterable values. And so, I'm going to attach an alterable value of B, uh, alterable value B, of which tile they are. So. I'm going to use the fast loop for that, so let's double click on that. Remember the fast loop will start at 0 and then go to 1, then 2, then 3, but at the moment it's only going to fire twice because we've only got two tiles there. And I'm going to set alterable value, and I've used A already, so I'm going to go to B, and I'm going to highlight this, I'm going to say I want the fast loop index for the current loop. And I'm just going to delete that. It sometimes does a return when you paste stuff in. It will work fine if you have the return in, because white space doesn't matter in the program this is running. So now each of those tiles is unique. That alterable value B is going to be different for each of those tiles in our toolbar. So the first one will be 0, and the second one will be 1. So if I show you, right click, frame. This one has an alterable value B of 0. This one has an alterable value B of 1. Okay. So I need some way of saying, right, okay, when you click on it, I want the data store to know which one you've currently selected. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go to alterable value, set alterable value. We've already got our words there, so current task selected. I want to set it to alterable value of B. Okay, now you might say, well, how, how does it know which one to pick for the alterable value of B? Well, if it's in this line and you've said that you're clicking on that one, it will assume you mean that one. Okay, it's really, really clever the way it does that. So when you click on it, it only picks the one you've clicked on and it looks for the alterable value B of it and then it will do current task selected to that value. Okay, so if I run it now, I'm going to be clever here, and I'm going to open up, uh, open up that data store. So where's my data store? There. And we go to alterable values. So current task selected zero. I haven't clicked on anything. So if I click on this one here, it's one. If I click on this one, it goes back to zero. Okay. So that seems to be working brilliantly. Now an issue is that it currently, if I reset it. It starts at zero, but it doesn't tell me that that one's highlighted, so that's quite easy to do. So I just want to do start a frame, and I want to locate that, the position of it, at zero, zero. Let's run it. And it's there, and it knows that it's been selected. So if I click on that, then it's reset to, or it's moved to one. If I click on that again, it's gone back to zero. 
Okay, so always have a default position. Um, there's very few programs that have toolbars that don't already expect you to have picked one already or don't have a default one that it assumes that you're using. Okie dokie, right. Now we need to be able to click on other things, okay? So this sounds like another group of events. Okay, so um, uh, update tiles. Click OK. All right, so I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to click on this and Control and C. I'm going to click on this and Control and V. So I want the similar. So if I show you what I'm going to do, I want if I I've, if I've got this selected and I click on this C tile. I want it to change to a grass tile. Okay, that's the whole point of a level editor. So what I need to do is somehow figure out, yes, I've figured out that I've clicked on these ones, but I haven't figured out that I've clicked on these ones. Okay? And the way of doing that is just alterable value A is zero for those ones. Okay. <laughs> now uh, I don't think any of these yeah, I don't think any of these are applicable, so let's just remove those. You can click and drag from a like minded, so an active if it's blank, I can just click, right click, left click and drag, and just remove things like that. Okay, it's that simple. You could click on them and press delete, and that works just as well, but that way is quicker. Okay, so I need some way of updating this tile, and the way of doing that is just change the direction of it. And I'm going to select the direction. Okay, I'm going to calculate it, because it's not always going to be one direction. Now, I'm going to calculate it so it is in the direction which we stored earlier. So in the current tile selected. So if I've got the grass tile, which is zero selected, then it will change it to a zero. If I've got the C tile, which is a one selected, it will change it to a C tile. It's that simple. And I think that's it. Let's cross fingers here. So let's run the frame. And I've got a grass tile selected. How good is that, eh? C tile selected. And it is that easy. That easy. With alterable values, everything just becomes so much easier. And I don't know how I would do this without alterable values. I really don't. Because each of these tiles has unique numbers stored in them. And I can just do any map I want. Now the issue is that I can't click and drag. Okay, and I might want to be able to just click and drag instead of having to click on each one. So let's try and fix that. I'm not quite sure whether this will work, but uh, if I change that, uh, I'm not. Yeah, so <laughs> this is where it gets complicated. So let's start a new condition, and what I want is mouse down. Uh, so where. Where is it? Uh, repeat while mouse key is pressed. Left button. Okay, and let's insert. And let's say that the mouse needs to be over an object. And let's just copy that over. And let's copy that over. So repeat while left mouse key is pressed and it's over that object, and that object is zero. Now, I have no idea whether this will work, so I'm going to delete that old one. But don't forget, I, I can press Control and V to bring it back. Or if you're not comfortable with that, what you can do is right-click and insert a never condition. And that just means that it's out of the game. Or you can put it into an inactive group. I believe, also, you can activate an inactivate line, which is brand new which is absolutely brilliant, that never used to happen. So that, um, in uh, programming languages, that would be called commenting out some of the code. It just means that that is still there in case we need to go back to it, but we um, are not using it. So it's, it, it won't run at all. It's as if it's not there, but it's still there just in case this doesn't work. Okay, so what great opportunity to bring that in. So let's run frame. I didn't even think I'd, I'd bring that into this one, but there we go. And let's see if it works. And look at that, eh? And let's do the C tile. 
and I'm holding down and I'm just clicking and dragging. Now does this muck up anything else? No it doesn't. How good is that? So I can create my top, my levels so much quicker now with that in effect. Now that's going to be interesting for later on. In fact no it's not. It's not going to change anything. How good is that? Ah, oh, I'm all proud of myself. I thought that that would not work straight away. When I've had um, mouse down things before, I've had to introduce alterable values, but I've tried to do things a little bit more complicated before. But no, I'm actually pretty proud of that. <laughs> How quick and easy is that, eh? Oh, there you go. I'm better than I thought I was. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop there for this video. Um, the next stage of this is, right, okay, that's all very well, but if I open it up again it just resets it back to zero so how am I going to then save this data and that's going to be for the next video if you enjoyed this video please click like if you really enjoyed it please click subscribe if there are other ways of doing it please let me know uh, because there are with computer programming a billion different ways of doing it I've picked what I think is the easiest but if you have an even easier one let me know thank you very much